The Storm by Walter Farley A young boy, Alec, is sailing home to America after visiting his uncle in India. When the ship, called the Drake, stops at a port, a group of men drag a beautiful, untamed black stallion on board. Alec loves horses and is captivated by this animal that won't let anyone come near him. In a bid to befriend the horse, which is called the Black, Alec starts leaving lumps of sugar at its stall every night. One night, a terrible calamity strikes the ship. What happens to the boy and the horse? The night was hot and still. Heavy clouds blacked out the stars and long streaks of lightning raced through the sky. The black had his head out the window, his ears pricked forward, his nostrils quivering, his black mane flowing. Alec could not turn his eyes away. He could not believe such a perfect animal existed. Just then, the black turned, whistled as he saw the boy, and again faced the water. Alec felt elated. It was the first time that the stallion hadn't drawn back into the stall at the sight of him. Moving closer, he held out the sugar in the palm of his hand to the stallion. The black turned and whistled softly this time. Alec stood his ground. No one had been this close to the stallion since he came on board. But Alec knew that it would not be wise to get any closer and so placed the sugar on the sill. The black looked at it, then back at the boy. Slowly, he moved over and began to eat the sugar. Alec watched him for a moment, satisfied. Then, as the rain began to fall, he went back to his cabin. In the middle of the night, the drake lurched crazily, awakening Alec, who was thrown onto the floor. Outside, there were deafening rolls of thunder. His first storm at sea, he pushed the light switch. It was dead. A flash of lightning illuminated the cabin. The top of his desk had been swept clear and the floor was covered with broken glass. Grabbing a pocket knife, which was a parting gift from his uncle, he strapped on his life jacket, hoping that he wouldn't need either. Opening the door, he staggered to the deck and hung on to the rail. The shouts of Captain Watson and the crew could be heard faintly above the roar of the winds. Huge waves swept from one end of the drake to the other. Hysterical passengers crowded into the corridor. Alec was genuinely scared now. Never had he seen a storm like this. For what seemed hours, the drake fought wave after wave, trembling, turning on its side, yet somehow managing to stay afloat. The storm began to subside a little and Alec felt new hope. But then there was a sharp crack and the ship shook. Alec was thrown flat on his face, which felt hot and sticky with blood. Then he became conscious of screaming passengers, climbing, crawling and stepping over him. Meanwhile, the drake had become still. Its engines had gone dead. Struggling, Alec pushed himself to his feet and made his way along the deck. His startled eyes took in the scene about him. The drake, struck by lightning, seemed almost cut in half. They were sinking. The crew were manning the lifeboats and Captain Watson 
was shouting directions. One boat was being lowered into the water. A large wave caught it and turned the boat and its occupants into the sea. The second lifeboat was being filled and Alec waited his turn. But when it came, the boat had reached its quota. Wait for the next one, Alec, Captain Watson said sternly. He put his arm on the boy's shoulder, softening the harshness of his words. Just then, Alec thought of the black. What was happening to him? Alec fought his way out of line and toward the stern of the boat. If the stallion was alive, he was going to set him free and give him a chance to fight for life. The stall was still standing. Alec heard a shrill whistle rise above the storm. He rushed to the door and swung it open. For a second, the mighty hoofs stopped pounding and there was silence. Alec backed away slowly. Then he saw the black, his head held high, his nostrils blown out with excitement. The horse snorted and plunged straight for the rail, which was broken at this point, leaving nothing between them and the open sea. The black swerved as he came near Alec, and the boy realized that the stallion was making for the hole. The horse's shoulder grazed Alec, who went flying into the deep. When he came up, he heard an explosion and he saw the drake settling into the water. Frantically, he looked around for a lifeboat, but there was none in sight. Then he saw the black swimming not more than ten yards away. Something floated by him, a rope which was attached to the black's halter. The same rope that they had used to bring the stallion aboard and which they had never been able to get close enough to the horse to untie. Without stopping to think, Alec grabbed hold of it. Then he was pulled through the water into the oncoming waves. He was too tired now to think about what he had done. He only knew that he had the choice of remaining in the water alone or being pulled by the black. If he was to die, he would rather die with the mighty stallion than alone. With one last look behind, he saw the drake sink into the sea. For hours, Alec battled the waves. He could hardly hold his head up. Suddenly, he felt the rope that was tied securely around his waist slacken. The black had stopped swimming. Alec anxiously waited, peering into the darkness. After a few minutes, the rope became taut again. The horse had changed direction. Four times, the black altered his course and Alec wondered whether the stallion's wild instinct was leading him to land. Meanwhile, the first streaks of dawn appeared on the horizon. The sun rose and shone down brightly on the boy. The salt water he had swallowed made him sick. But when Alec felt that he could not hold on any longer, the sight of the struggling, fighting animal in front of him renewed his courage. Suddenly, he realized that they were going with the waves instead of against them. Yes, they must be approaching land. Eagerly, he strained his salt-filled eyes and looked into the distance. He saw a reef. He might find food and water there and have a chance to survive. Faster and faster, they approached the white sand. With a shrill scream and a shake of his head, the black went faster through the shallow water to reach the shore. Alec's head whirled as he was pulled toward the beach with ever-increasing speed. Suddenly, he realized 
the danger of his position. He had to untie the rope from around his waist or else he would be dragged over the sand. Frantically, his fingers flew to the knot as the shore drew closer and closer. The black was now on the beach. Thunder began to roll from beneath his hooves as he landed on the shore. Hours in the water had swelled the knot. Alec couldn't untie it. Then he remembered the pocket knife. Could it still be there? Alec's fingers reached inside and came out with the knife. He was being dragged by the stallion on the shore and sand flew in his face. He had to act quickly. He opened the knife and began to cut the rope. His body burned from the sand. His clothes were being torn off. Desperately, he sawed away at the rope. With one final thrust, he was through. As the black galloped to his freedom, Alex's outstretched hands caressed the sand. Both he and the horse were alive.